looking to buy, sell, or trade any old retro video games like the ones found in this review, then check out The Tech Exchange by clicking the link below in the video description. Hey, God, you people are watching the Nerdorama Network. Narf! Hello, gamers, and welcome to this week's edition of The Gamer Chronicles. This week, I'm reviewing a game that needs a lot more attention than what it actually gets, and that is Dirge of Cerberus Final Fantasy VII for the PlayStation 2 Entertainment System. Now, for those of you who may not be too familiar with the series Final Fantasy, it is a turn-based role-playing game series. In 1997, Final Fantasy VII was released for the PS1, and it was an astonishing hit. In fact, it is one of the defining games in the series. In 2006, American audiences were treated to a CG animated movie called Final Fantasy VII Advent Children. In that same year, we also received Dirge of Cerberus for PS2, and in the following year, we got Crisis Core for the PSP. Both games being action spinoffs from Final Fantasy VII. This game has Vincent Valentine as the main protagonist, while an evil organization known as Deep Ground are the main antagonists. Their goal is to release a creature known as Omega to destroy all of the planet, but they need the proto-materia in order to control Omega, which they believe Vincent has. I won't spoil the story any more for you, so let's move on. The music in this game is standard to what we are used to in a Final Fantasy title which means a beautiful score with high quality audio sound effects. Sadly, the voice acting could use a little bit of work, but it's not bad either. Just a few clips of this will leave you wanting to play the game for yourself just to hear more. Constructed. His goal was to create an army of superhuman warriors, not once letting morality. Use this! Gameplay is standard run and gun, with a few RPG elements, such as leveling up your character and your weapons. In a lot of ways, it plays a lot like Devil May Cry. You do not have the awesome combo system, but I personally prefer the melee attacks over using the guns. The controls feel a bit clunky, but once you get used to them, they become rather easy to use. You use the left stick to move Vincent, while the right stick is used to control the camera. The D-pad is used for selecting and using different items like potions and limit breakers, with L1 for using magic and L2 for toggling your weapons. R1 is used to shoot, while R2 is used to reload your gun. The X button is used to jump, and the circle button is used for your melee attack. The square button is used to crouch, and the triangle button is used to open your main menu. The graphics in this game are very pretty, but who can expect bad graphics from a Square Enix game? I mean, really. With excellent character models and beautiful backgrounds, this game is truly a sight to behold. So, in the end, I think this game is really great. Other than the clunky controls that after a while you do get used to, it's a whole lot of fun and I think this game is just very underrated and I think it's a lot of fun, especially for the time that it was released. It's a really great game. And that wraps up this week's review. Please, don't forget to subscribe to my channel here and follow me on Twitter at IHaveThePower82. Thank you guys so much for watching, and game over. Stay tuned next week, everybody, because I will be reviewing Darius Gaiden for the Sega Saturn.